beast, isn't they? Chuff the bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I just kind of feel I'm not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him, man. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same, same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm out in the workshop, beavering around. And today's video starts with a letter from David Draper. Hi Mark, this is my version of a one up, one down, clip down rig. It's simple to make, it's self adjusting, streamlined and the combinations are endless. I have sent three examples. Well, first and foremost, although I've already messaged uh, David, thank you very much. We'll file that in the workshop letter rack right there. Um, yeah, so what have we got? Well, he sent three variations of a drop down pulley rig. A short version with small hooks, um, beautifully made. The craftsmanship on these is spectacular. You can see a lot of care and attention have gone into these rigs. Small hook version. Another three foot rig. He says, just trying to make sure I don't get a tangle. Um, a three foot rig. But this one specifically, and this is where the variations come in, with a, a worm bait prepared top hook with a bait stop and sequin. And the bottom one is more predominantly for um, I would say small line stuff like that because it's got a small J hook and a small circle hook as the panel. And these have got uh, 65, 70 mil. Let's just double check because we did some, we did some research on this. Um, look at that, 70 mil of rig tubing. I think we did on the early videos of this type of rig, um, 65 70 mil we came out that seemed to reduce the amount of tangles and then if you went any longer or any shorter any shorter and you increase the chance of tangle any longer you didn't reduce it but you use more rig tubing so i think we came out at 65 70 mil when i did that little bit of research practice and finally a four foot rig a different variation slightly bigger hooks wormer hooks bait stops um, same rig tubing, anti-tangle, cascade swivels and this time using an aero pulley as the top instead of a pulley, uh, uh, like a Gemini style pulley. So three different rigs. I've used and adapted a version of it, a scratching rig that I used, a worm based scratching rig with bait, sequins, bait stops and smaller hooks these are size one hooks and this caught loads caught absolutely loads and i've used that rig albeit with different hooks i've used that actual rig twice so that one's ready for recovery i'll recover the components off that and freshen it up what we're going to do now is using everything that david has shown us the things that i've learned from making and using these rigs we're going to make one and then show some variations. Some variations that you can pick and choose from. Things that will, might give you, oh, I'll try that. Or hmm, for my location, my species that I'm aiming, that's perfect. Or I'm going to do, use something slightly different. So let's jibber jabber. Let's make. Um, pause is your friend on this. So if I'm going too quick, I do get complaints that I go too quick. I don't show enough. Um, what I'd like to say is pause it, rewind it, have a good look. I'll put massive description of components and variations in the description with links. If you want to click and try and if you want to try and get the exact same components. Um, first up and the backbone of the rig is the rig body. So I am a big fan of this. This is Asso Ultraflex. I'm going to be using a six ounce weight. So this is 70 pound rig body. The reason why I go 70 pound, general rule of thumb is 10 pound of rig body to one ounce of weight. And I like the safety factor of 10 pound more. So six ounce weight, 70 pound line. I use 
60, 70 and 80. I've got loads of this. I use it all the time. And I would fully endorse it if anyone asked because it's good stuff. It ties nice, it's flexible, it's abrasion resistant. It, it's everything that you need for that. And doubles up, you could use it as a uh, shock leader. So say for argument's sake, you got one reel of that 70 in your box and you need a new shock leader, boom. If you need to sort out a rig body or make another rig, same stuff. Same stuff, it does two jobs, rig body, and a shock leader. Tie into the bottom is a Gemini super strength clip. And I've got these loose packaged, so I haven't actually got the official packaging to show you on that one, but it's a Gemini super strength clip. The difference being the silvers are standard, the bronze colored ones are the super strength ones. There's minimal variation in cost. I just go for the super strength ones. So I've just tied a three tone grinner. I'm not going to concentrate on knots today. We've got too much to cover with the rigs. But there's plenty of my other videos where I'll go a little bit deeper into knots. Okay, four foot rig body, super strength clip and one five mil bead. The beads I'm using, I like these, because the quality is different. They're, they've got a better, there's no taggy bits to them. They just, you do pay for the difference. Um, five millimeter Cox and Royal Pro Rig beads. Some people say a bead is a bead, fair point. Um, I do think they've just tipped the edge. Now the next thing we're gonna look at, and there's gonna be a lot of this, variations. So you can have a cascade swivel made by Cox and Royal. You can have a breakaway cascade swivel. I would suggest for lighter applications, the breakaway cascade swivel is a finer, smaller, more compact cascade swivel. Cox and Royal one is just a bit more butch. And let's just see if there's anything on the packaging that we need to know. No, nothing else on this. There's no poundage or anything like that. But what I will say is the gauge of wire is just a little bit thicker than the Cascade Swivel from Breakaway for strength. And this isn't proven, strength, the breakaway one, looks just a bit lighter. It might do better for scratching applications and light, lighter applications. But what's important to remember is when the cascade swivel goes on, with that, everything, sh it should sit naturally pointing down. On this rig that we're making now, it has to be in that orientation, pointing down. And then I'm going to go for a Gemini pulley. One of those. All the links and tags will be in the description. I'll, I'll, I'll dig out a load of tags and links and put them in. And then two more of those five mil beads. So we're starting to stack some components and then to tie it all off at the end, I'm going for a Gemini 140 pound stainless steel swivel. I use these a lot. They're size four, they're compact, super strong, robust, last, reusable. Um, knot puller. Snug down your knot. and just trim the end and then we can have a look at what we got. Because we've got a captive main part of our rig now. So we started off at four foot and all components tied were four and three quarters. We have got a 
100 pound, 140 pound stainless steel Gemini swivel, 70 pound rig body, going down to, in order from the weight end, a super strength clip, a bead, a Coxon Royal Cascade swivel, a pulley bead, Gemini pulley bead, and two 5mm beads above it. So if we were to hang that up now by the pulley, and attach a weight. I like making my rigs hung like this. I do like it. I think it, um, it makes life a little bit easier. So what do we do now? We will need some hook snood. And at the moment, ASO, so there's a, there's a definitive trend with the line that I'm using at the moment. This is Oblivion Memory Free. And I've chosen 30 pound um, for my hook snoods. Now I always was an amnesia fan. Always was. Love the stuff. Think it's amazing. Um, it's expensive. The price has absolutely rocketed recently to the point where I started looking for alternatives. And the alternative was right under my nose. It was in the ASO range. So I have been using Oblivion. I've had no issues with it. I haven't been using it long enough to think categorically, it's amazing, that's what I'm gonna use forever. Um, but it's good enough that it's different to the cost of amnesia, definitely. Um, all I've done there is measured 30 pound to exactly the same length. So when tie knots, it's gonna be different. So I had a slight hiccup with both camera and rig tubing, but just to say that there's 65 millimeters of rig tubing, and it's just gone over one side of the swivel, but it still means that the other side of the swivel can do its job. So 65 mil over one half of the swivel, and we've got the remnants of that 12 inches. So let's have a look. So for my top hook, I would like to put a bait stop. I'm not going to use a sequin on this one because this bait stop is a little bit chunky. And this is a fish stone bait, bait stop. And it's the extra large one which explains why it's too big. By fish uh, bait stop, I just mean one of these. So to stop the ragworm from blowing up the line and coming off the hook, just put a bait stop on. So one bait stop, if it decides it wants to go on. There we go, it's on. Slide it up out of the way. And for the top hook, I'm going for a size one. This is like a worm style hook. A size one Varavas Aberdeen style hook. I have been using these recently and I've been working my way through this packet. They are very sharp, very strong, and they go through a, a ragworm very cleanly. I know that sounds a bit silly, but the coating on these is, is really nice. I really like it. Um, difference to my normal routine for knots, I'm just gonna go for a blood knot. One, two, three, four without tuck, just a straight old blood knot. Can use my knot puller on the actual hook. Smaller hooks always make me nervous. Everything cinched down, everything tightened down. And then for this, we need to cut this tag end nice and short. So I'm gonna cut it tight in. There we go. Run that bait stop down to the hook. So when I unpack it and we go to use it, I know it's there. And that is our top hook complete. If we have a look through those components, the 140 swivel, 65 mil of one and a half millimeter rig tubing, 30 pound amnesia, a too large bait stop, but it will stop the ragworm blowing up the line. And that Varavas Aberdeen style size one hook, all perfect. If you want to put an entire worm and up the line, 
and your bait stop will stop it going all the way up. If you want to keep it captive to just the J style portion, stop crabs and things nipping through your line, that's good as well. And it will kick out nicely like that, especially when baited up. So the remnants of that hook snood is approximately three foot, just under. Um, I'm going to tie it onto this cascade swivel. Three, counting in my mind. Can't count, breathe, and think all at the same time. I'm a man. And with the tag end, we'll just get rid of that. When I cut that last piece of rig tubing, I cut the same amount twice. So I have 65 mil of one and a half mil rig tubing available. It's fighting me a little bit. And the same routine where we will get that over the bottom portion of the swivel if we just show that to the camera, you see where that swivel just will still rotate. Let's check that. Just dress it down. Mine's just catching slightly, so it's worth checking. Everything's worth checking. Okay, there we go. And it's still free to rotate. And then for the bottom of this, I am going to go with a panel arrangement and for the panel arrangement I want to fish small baits still I don't want to go crazy large baits I'm going to go for a top gun panel and a Sakuma Manta 540 for the lower and the reason why I've gone for these lighter style hooks is it gives me the option to use sandy so I had to pause then um, <laughs> but yeah, for sand eel, or for my pulley hook, I've cut about 15 millimeters of rig tubing, which represents the shank part of that top gun hook. Hard to show on camera, possibly easier to show once I've actually put it on, tied it and got it into place. So quite importantly, my mate Stu showed me this. The line should go for your pulley through the top of the hook, not through the bottom of the hook. If you put it through the bottom, the act of pulling on the hook will turn the hook away. Through going through the top, any pulling on the line will actively increase the hooking of that hook. So it needs to go through the top of the hook and then not easy for my little fat thumbs, but then we need to rotate and slide this rig tubing on. And it's playing ball. <laughs> yeah. So that is what we've ended up with. So the line's gone through, let's have a look, through that way, along the back, rig tubing over the lot, and it's slideable. And you can still take turns to lock it off, but it's just all encompassed by rig tubing. For storage, I take all the turns off just so we don't crimp the line, if it's gonna be in storage for a little while. See how aggressive that hook is? That's the panel part of the hook. That will secure the top part of the bait. For the bulk of the bait, the bottom half of that hook, we're gonna go with one of these Sakuma Manta 540s. Quite an underestimated hook in my eyes. I think these are a lovely little hook. Um, but I will say the Varavas BMX is like this, but on steroids. It's just a stronger hook. One, two, three. I can hear that rain outside. It's supposed to be heavy rain today. Hope that doesn't come out too much on, on the microphone but it's definitely a workshop day, not an out on the beach day. Mm. 
and that's fully tightened down. We'll just snip that up and then when we tidy this up, I can give you a good look. So there we go. Let's dress these down. That is a lovely hooking arrangement and this is almost an exact replica of what David showed me on his rig. It is a perfect sand eel hook type setup. See that with the panel? And what you can do is you can take the turns around the shank, lock it underneath the rig tubing, but that makes for a very, very, very tidy bottom hook. So let's hook it all up. Put it in the clip on the weight. Raise the cascade swivel. Pull the top um, pulley part down to meet it. And there we've got it. There is one variation, my interpretation, of what Dave has shared and shown us all. What a stunning rig. Tidy, aerodynamic, good for scratching, covers the bottom, covers the uh, first foot where we know fish will travel through. Got bait stops, we've got a panel, got a grip weight with a, with a um, captive uh, bait clip. What's not to love? Bait that up, hang it on your tripod, good to go, get a couple out, Prep another one. Mark, what are the variations? The variations are, are infinite. What I'm gonna try and do now is in fairly quick time, build another rig, but a beefed up version, and then a lighter version. So this is middle ground. This I think would cover most people's scratching fishing love to discuss it but we can butch this one right up we can butch it up or we can make it a lot lighter smaller components smaller hooks slight variations and make it for smaller species and scratching so you could have all three in your arsenal this is middle ground a heavy choice and a light choice so again enough jibber jabbering that's that one Let's crack on. Let's go for the heavy version, eh? Let's get the heavy version. I'm gonna prep some components so you don't see me cutting, snipping, and mucking about. We're just gonna build a heavy version. I'll be back in about two minutes. So moving on to the heavy version. Um, I've cut five foot of rig body, and this is 80 pound ASSO Ultra Flex. Just gonna tie on a super strength clip next door neighbors hammering away the weather has turned for the worse there's been a few thunder lightning um, strikes events definitely not the day to have two 14 foot carbon fiber rods pointing up in the air <laughs> so one of the first variations we're going to have a look at and all I've done there is tied on the super strength rig clip is to look at these and these were suggested to me by Rovers Tackle in Fairham and they're carp, carp fishermen use them, they're buffer beads. What's a buffer bead Mark? Well it's just like a rubber stopper with a hole through it like a, a, a drill drilling and just a line hole. What you can do with this instead of using a standard bead a spherical bead and if we look at this my eyes itching that's it without setting it home bear in mind you're going to clip your weight on and then this goes over the knot and the first part of that clip so if i just pull that down nice and tight that reduces the the uh, the tangles you see that and also it acts as the, the stopper for the pulley bead. All will become clear as we go along, as we progress. So the next thing to do is to put on the cascade swivel, making sure it's in the correct orientation, pointing downwards. 
then the pulley bead, then another one of our stoppers, and then to tie on a 140 pound swivel. And as soon as I've got this tied on, we can have a look and I can show you what I mean. Where you would normally use beads as stoppers, you can use a rubber buffer. I have to think of my words then, because that's what's actually written on the front. A buffer. But the buffer seats and lives quite comfortably on top of the swivel. And we'll, and we'll have a closer look. Pictures paint a thousand words. Let's see what you think. Because I like them. It's a variation. It's something different. It helps to reduce tangles. It certainly is different to what I would normally do. Okay, so there's one buffer in place and that swivel is still free to do its swiveling. But it's got the buffer. At the other end, we've got another buffer over the super strength clip which also helps once the weight's on to reduce tangles. So when we hang that up and hang it we shall. One, it kicks the line out at the top. It sits nicely in a pulley bead and I've not got a weight. Let's just get a weight. Let's get a grip weight and clip that in. And pull that buffer down over the top of that clip and then it sits down nicely like that. So we're looking at a five foot rig, 80 pound asso. So the five foot of hook snood I've cut into two being roughly 16 inches and the rest for the bottom. What we can do is we can tie that to the swivel for the top snood. And please bear with me with the speed we're rattling through this because this is a variation of, there is a pulley dropper rig on the, on the channel this is paying homage to what David has sent and taken the time to send in to share with us and also some of my own variations and other bits and pieces. So I am still going down the same routine of putting a little bit of rig tubing, one and a half mil. This is Gemini, other brands obviously are available. And we'll get that over that swivel. So that swivel is encapsulated with a buffer on one side and rig tubing on the other. And I'll give you a look because this might not be something that people have either done or considered before. And if you have, you'll understand why I'm putting it on if you haven't. So that swivel is still free to swivel. It has a buffer, quite, quite large, I will admit, but this is a large, strong rig. Um, yeah, so a buffer and the swivel. So for the top hook, I am going to use a bait stop because it gives me options for large worm baits. I'm thinking, you know, like large blow lug, lug worm. I might even give this rig a try out in Norway. just as a as a as a suck it and see as a comparison right this does not want to slide on come on baby on you go <laughs> okay one bait stop for the top hook i am going to go for these are varivas and this is oh, don't want the panel i'm going to go for a 3-0 Big mouth extra, and these are 
really good quality. I love the quality. Very strong hooks. 101% trust in these hooks. These are the good stuff. One, two, three. Given the choice, I use these for most of my fishing now. Um, I've gone through the Sakuma range, Cox and Royal. Uh, I think at the moment, for the kind of fishing I do, species I target, these Varavas hooks are very hard to beat. Okay, so there we go. A nice strong 3 big mouth extra. That will take a significant bait and kicks away from the line with that buffer bead. For the bottom end of everything, I'm just going to take the weight off this for a minute and attach this cascade swivel. This is where the Cox and Royal cascade swivel just seems to have a bit more about it than the breakaway one but suits like a heavier application compared to the breakaway one which we're going to use for the lighter scratching rig with the lighter hooks and the lighter setup. Okay, we are going to use a little bit of rig tubing on that one. Again, 65-70mm seems to be the sweet spot of what works without wastage or using too much. We'll get that tucked in on there. Find you put it all under tension it seems to seems to comply a little bit better. Certainly needs a little bit of lubricant. Almost, not quite. Struggling, it's fighting me this one. You always get one that does fight you, don't you? That's sitting on there comfortably. Just give it a little manipulation. So that is all on there now. And then the next thing, something we've not introduced yet, but something I'm keen to show, is this stuff. You know, I can't see it, Mark, it's clear. <laughs> That's the whole point. It is hearing aid tubing. Hearing aid tubing, I kid you not. Um, it is ridiculously cheap. And before you all get up in arms and go, oh, well, surely you're stopping people that need it. No, there's loads of it. There's so much of it online and on some of the mail order sites. There's loads of it, there's tons of it. 25 meters, a couple of quid you get a truckload of it. Um, for my panel, a big mouth, not extra, a big mouth panel, a 2.0 as my locator. And they've got the kink in them. Let's see if you can see that against my t-shirt. You see that's got a kink to it? So that sits in nicely. I'll feed that on. And then for the bottom hook, you can tell this is going towards winter fishing now. The big mouth extra, but a 4 -o. Now This is a beast of a hook. This has got a lot of substance to it. Um, you either need one of these or you don't. If you don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. If you don't need one, you put one of these on and you're not looking at something significant. Yeah. If you're scratching, this ain't gonna be catching. For simple reason being, most fish won't fit that in its mouth. It's a big old hook. Right, so with our hearing aid tubing, we're gonna set up our panel. Careful not to hook myself. Don't wanna to put too much moisture on this. For simple reason being, I don't want to pre-rust the hook while it's in storage in its um, in its bag. Okay, so that is 
the panel set up with a 2.0 BMX, big mouth, no, BMP, big mouth panel, and a 4.0 BMX, big mouth extra. That is on the bottom. So if we set that down now, and we go through the procedure of clipping up, this is part of the reason why I like to hang all my rigs, proof that I've got all my connections right. You can put some tension on them. You can actually set them to make sure that they are configured correct. Nothing worse than getting to the beach and finding that something isn't the right length, which I've done something wrong with my sums there, and I? I've managed to get that the wrong length. How did I do that then? Easily resolved. I'll take it out of the hook. So we'll slide that up a piece. Remove the hook. Better to be too long. I don't know what I've done wrong with my sums there. I must have. I must have offered that up wrong. Easily resolved. Easier to tie on the bigger hooks than it is the smaller hooks, especially for my sausage fingers. Let me dress all this out. There we go. Don't know what I did wrong there, but I've clearly done something wrong. But that's how you correct it. Okay. So we have something quite significant. We have a. What did we go for? 3 0 top hook, wasn't it? A 3-0 top hook, a just short of five foot pulley dropper with a 4-0 BMX, a 2-0 BMP. I'm just double checking to make sure I'm not giving the bums there. Yeah, 2-0 BMP. Um, what do I think that's going to catch? Whiting, rays, um, cod, bass, eel. And the whole time that thing's fishing, and there's plenty of information about this going around. Um, how well does a dropper rig actually fish? Well, let's just have a quick look. So that's three foot away from the weight. And this one's flapping around in the breeze, three foot above the weight, pretty much. A lovely squid, mackerel, um, big worm bait on the top there and something spectacular on the bottom spread out like a mackerel and squid wrap um, or, or anything like that really cocktail baits um, I think it's going to fish really well but that's a heavier version that's as heavy as I would want to go 80 pound mainline 60 pound hook snoods Varavas BMX and BMP hooks uh, on there the buffer beads which are a little bit more robust than just a straightforward bead act as the kicking out agent for the top part rig tubing to help prevent tangles um, there's a rig that's the heavier version of the rig just going to clip this up and store it out of the way get that clipped up clips up really nice streamlined good for casting we'll get that out of the way okay so we've got medium variations we've gone heavy I'm gonna make the same rig now in its lighter form or in its lightest form um, show those differences I'd love I welcome comments good bad or indifferent keep them polite because it's nice that way um, but yeah Happy to discuss a cracking design of rig. Um, very much appreciated from, from Dave sending these in. Um, I'm going to package these back up again in a minute. I'm going to prep some kit. I'll be back with you in a minute. So I'm back again. <laughs> Where you been, Mark? I've been sorting out kit. So I have got myself together the components for what is the lightest version of what we've been discussing and my little fat fingers can pick up the clip. So I have gone for four foot of 60 pound ASSO Ultraflex. I'm tying on one of those super strength clips. A lot of this is gonna be a little bit repetitive, but we'll work our way through it. Before I 
before you cinch down your knots, always lubricate them. You damage the mono. Um, and your failure point will be that. You'll wonder, well, why did that snap? Why did that rig come back without that? It's because of that. Putting heat into the mono. Okay, so we've got our 60 pound. We're going to blast this one together. I'm using three mil. We're going lighter on everything. Three mil luminous beads. I'm using a breakaway cascade swivel. It is a lighter build than the Coxon Royal. It is a lot lighter. Thinner gauge wire. Same pulley swivel. I like these swivels. Once you trust something, once you're confident in something, stick with it. I'm going for another two 3mm swivels. That I can't seem to pick up. Managed it. There we go. So, just to catch up. Hidden in amongst all of that giblets is a super strength. A 3mm bead, a cascade swivel, a pulley swivel and two 3mm beads. And we'll top the lot off with our favourite 140 pound stainless Gemini swivel. Because it's only size 4, small, compact, very strong. Love it. Love it to pieces. Not sponsored, by myself. Um, that is my personal view. Just to reiterate, I'm not sponsored by anyone for any of this stuff. This is all my own personal either research, practice, my view, speaking to other people, having things recommended to me that I've tried out for myself, all of that good stuff. Okay, so we're going to hang this one up because we're going with lighter components. I should ideally put a lighter weight. So 60 pound main line, the maximum you should go is a 50 pound weight, uh, 50 pound weight, five ounce weight. And I've clipped one on and we're good to go. So despite what I said earlier on, I've just had to dig through my storage of kit and stuff. And the most suitable line I've got available to me is 15 pound amnesia. Never said there was anything wrong with it, just said I didn't like buying it, it too expensive. Um, so I've cut a length to four foot. I'm gonna add the top snood, which is cut at about 16 inches. One, two. That rain is proper sheeting down outside. And I did say sheeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Two, three. With this finer line, definitely, definitely moisten your knots and cinch them down slowly. Then just pull them and chunk, try and get them to get, you know, rush through this stuff. Care and attention is the key. Um, 65 mil of rig tubing. I do like to use rig tubing when kicking rigs away from main bodies or to stop them getting tangled up with grip leads. That's my thinking. That's why I tend to use it where I use it. This one doesn't want to seem to go through because it's like a line, it's fighting me. A little bit of a twizzle and a twizzle. There we go. And then we'll just set that onto the end there. Onto the swivel. Still swivels, but helps to set the line away. Now this is the lightest version of what we are going to be making and true to form. I've lost my hook. Where's my hook gone? Where are my hooks gone? I put it somewhere and I don't know where I put it. Ah, because I put it to the side. <laughs> it's beside you. Okay, so we discussed these earlier on. These are size one Varavas Aberdeen hooks. I do like these. Totally endorse them, love them. 
small, very sharp, and for their size, strong. Now I am very conscious that we need a bait stop. So because I haven't got bait stops that are small enough, you can cut rig tubing to four to five millimeters, pass the line through it, and then pass it through again. When you cinch down, I'm just gonna slide that up, it forms a stop knot. And I'll give you a look in a minute, but I also want, because that's not much of a stop for a worm, I'm going to put a sequin on as well. And sequins, for my little fat fingers and my old eyes, aren't the easiest things in the world to do. But I got lucky. <laughs> I got lucky. Where's my hook? We're on a roll. We're winning. Okay. Okay, so this is the one time I'm going to disconnect that weight because with it swinging around, a small, very sharp mm, hook, I've got a chance of sticking that in me. All right, this time we're not unhindered. That rain is absolutely, there was thunder earlier. I was quite surprised to hear it, to be honest. Southampton Boat Show on this week, September. Um, yeah. Today's not a big, I bet they'll sell some waterproof clothing down there today. Maybe some umbrellas. Uh, and the red arrows did fly over our house yesterday on their way to the the boat show. That was nice to see. Those boys up there look pretty spectacular in their aeroplanes. Okay, so we have a size one Aberdeen, a sequin, and immediately above it, let's just separate it so you can see, a stop knot with about four or five mil of silicon tubing. That's the way we're rolling with that top hook. I'm gonna put my weight back on now just to keep everything square straight and in tension. My three foot of hook snood goes on to the uh, cascade swivel next. Get that tied on. Looking forward to the comments guys. Um, and the interaction. So even if they're just reaffirming what you're seeing, what we're thinking, what I'm showing, if you disagree with it, please fire away. If there's something you can put forward for the greater good for the fishing community and to share with us all, brilliant. Um, do you actually fish with a rig like this? What have you caught? Where have you caught it? How do you think this one benefited? Or have you, adversely, have you blanked using a rig like this and you just couldn't get on with it? Because I've got some rigs that I just do not like. I just, I don't know if it's a personal thing, whether I'm using them wrong. Um, you know, whether it's, haven't quite got the gist of it and I'm using it at the wrong state of tide or something. I have those um, views and thoughts on some rigs and then other people go, oh no, that's my go-to rig. I absolutely love it. You're like, wow, what am I doing wrong? Because we're all different. We're all different and we all fish in different places for different things. Just putting the sequin on. I've already done the um, silicon stop knot. Just getting ready to tie the last hook on. Once I've got this last hook on, we'll see how good my sums have been and whether my line lengths are right. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if it's not. One, 
these are amazing little hooks super strong for their size some people might say that that means that they're too butch that rain is proper coming down now isn't it this would be a good test of the mycorionophones see how good they are whether they're picking up that that weather that's going on outside okay because I've just twisted that all up I need to take that line twist out so it doesn't get a memory that's just because of the way I did that stop that silicon stop knot just make sure we take that all out we don't want that to be stored in the line okay let's clip up so this isn't a captive bait clip but it's going to work for what I need for today I've got my sums right this is a really light version it's a light version but it looks pretty okay here we go so we have got size one hooks we've got sequins and stop knots for bait stops we've got 15 pound amnesia for the hook snood we've got a breakaway cascade swivel lighter gauge um, we're still using the 140 pound that shows how flexible they are you can use them on your lighter rigs you can use them on your heavier rigs and everything in between so we have got a light rig we've got the medium rig that's geared up for sort of rays at the bottom um, and worm baits for the top and then we've got the super heavy rig that's geared up proper going for it um, but we're still using all the same type components we've gone to breakaway cascade swivel we've gone to buffers rather than beads remember we discussed those they're like from the carp community those buffers um, I don't see many sea anglers using those buffers but they do have uh, a place so we've got light medium and heavy pulley drop down rigs far away get the comments coming in fellas i'm looking forward to them um comments differences give us some more give us some more um i'm going to carry on making rigs going to start setting up for my next lot of filming we've got loads coming through the winter we're going to do more stuff in the workshop we've got the first fire up of the log burner of the year coming soon um, yeah it's all good stuff so from me from here for now it's goodbye tight lines happy fishing take care and i'll see you again soon bye for now <laughs>